Hey everybody, Roy Kane here, and I am a fan of Ashes, and this is some more expansions here for the Red Rain set, which allows you to play more cooperatively. This adds another cam Chimera to the game, and then also adds another pre-built Phoenix Born deck that you can play with against. Let's take a look at what comes in this box. All right, so let's talk about Blight of the Never Set here. And if you haven't seen these before, they come with, uh, in the box, you get the Chimera, which is basically the bad guy you fight against with all of their cards. And then you get a pre-built um, Phoenix Born deck with several Phoenix Born you can play with. So I guess what's, what we'll look at first is what comes in the Chimera deck. All right, so the Blight of the Never Set here, this crazy like plant looking Chimera, of course has a bunch of different difficulties you can play with. And I love the fact that this can kind of let you play the game on whatever skill level you're currently at. I'm a noob, so I play on standard play at level one. If I play these a bunch, I would probably end up leveling them up, but this shows you how many um, threats come out. Uh, so you'll have, or you'll have a bunch of these and then it shows you how many threat it takes to uh, have his ultimate go off. Um, so yeah, and then it shows you also how many hit points he has. And this is standard for solo. If you flip it to the other side, it has what you need for two players. And it'll double the hit points and things like that and make it so that more are needed for the ultimate. But you have all of these different difficulties, adding it so that there's more threats each time, higher hit points, and sometimes lower ultimate thresholds and things like that, depending on what side you're playing. You can go all the way up to heroic, which uh, the card is red, so uh, I think I'll stay away. Um, but yeah, so that is the stuff there and then we also have the ultimates and behaviors um the way these work is these will kind of like you'll start with the level ones of these and as he gets the red rains tokens he'll switch into the other ones just like all of the other sets um but this guy's pretty interesting because um after placing red rains tokens on this chimera if there are red rains tokens equal to or greater than the ultimate value you resolve the following which is the same as always um remove red rains tokens from the chimera equal to its ultimate value then you discard um, cards on the battlefield that it, it does not own, of course, like clearing up any sort of weird stuff that you have on it. Um, then you attach a bleed alteration spell to the leftmost unit on each of the Chimera's opponents, which bleed is one of the new um, the new uh, conjurations here. Bleed is going to basically, at the end of each of your turns, put a wound on your, your unit there, which is rough. And then also... This adds a face down aspect card to each of the Chimera's battlefields. Um, if it is currently the recovery step, do this step after replenishing um, aspects. And then you remove this card from the top, and then it'll have increased so that it now has ultimate level two, which is worse. And then, of course, ultimate level three, which gets even worse. So he's all about, he'll end up putting some of these different conjurations on your stuff. There's a bleed one. And then there's a Scarlet Seed, which is going to make him get to that ultimate even faster if you don't take care of this uh, Conjured aspect. And then, of course, there's new rules that talked about how the uh, Conjurations work. Um, but yeah, so he's also going to, if he hits that ultimate, he's going to fill up his battlefield. So the higher level, the worse that's going to be. And his behavior here, this is one of the interesting things I thought about this specific Chimera, is that he doesn't have a lot of things on here that attacks. So there's, there's a little bit of stuff here, but if you roll this four through five, that's when they're gonna attack on phase one. Um, most of the other ones are basically just upgrading rage dice and revealing cards. A lot of his stuff has stuff to do with status, so he's not gonna be attacking you a ton, but as things go up, of course, all of that changes and gets worse and worse if his uh, ultimate goes off a couple times. So he's gonna have a lot more attacks and things like that if, you're, if he's getting those red rain tokens. Um, and then, one of the interesting things about this one is that a lot of these cards, I don't like to show these cards too much. You have the uh, Bloom aspect and the Thorn aspect here. Um, a lot of these cards have to do with status tokens and those coming off of there, and they're just messing you up in a bunch of different ways. I also think it's because you're fighting a plant, it's not super attacky back, but it has all these interesting statuses and things that like make it so you can't uh, attack the Chimera, and then you have your attack reduced, like Soothing Scent, like things that are just going to be more calming, but then there's a bunch of stuff that like this puts those seeds into play that are going to make that ultimate trigger more often. And this one makes you actually draw cards, but it also discards cards from your deck, so messing up your deck as well. Um, but there are stuff that can attack you, especially this uh, this uh, Sewing Strike can be pretty nasty um, when it comes out and attacks you. And then the Vine, we have a bunch of different stuff here with the Thorn aspect, which this set is a bit more attacky with the different stuff. I just love the artwork in Ashes. Like, I've always loved it, and this game has been around for a while at this point, but, like, the artwork is just so amazing and how the 
They make the theme come through. This Vampire Roots is a terrifying card. But yeah, there's a bunch of different stuff here. Attack four, and then after this unit destroys a unit, it's going to actually heal the Chimera, doing the opposite of what you want it to do. But yeah, um, that is basically Never Set. He's going to be putting a bunch of those different statuses on you, making your guys bleed, all sorts of different thorn stuff, kind of like very plant-like stuff going on there. So that is him. Let's take a look at the actual Phoenix Born. You have your four different Phoenix Born that come in the game, and these are, of course, different versions of Phoenix Born that have already been out for Ashes Rise of the Phoenix Born, but they do have uh, new cards that go along with them. Um, so I love uh, uh, Maoni's uh, ability here, Command Strike. This is a minor action, and you exhaust it, and you spend two basic dice. Choose an unexhausted unit you control, deal damage equal to the target unit, equal to the chosen unit's attack value. So if you have a really strong attack guy, you can be like, oh, I'll spend a couple basic to do some extra damage, which would be huge, especially in the uh, solo, like knocking out some of those guys. And then Venom Strike and things like that. Choose an opponent, discard X cards from the top of their deck, um, deal X damage to their Phoenix Born, and then place each charm die on an opponent's exhausted pool. Um, back back in your thing and this is x is the number of charm dice so basically if you get a ton of charm dice all of this is going to have to do with doing a bunch of charm dice which just comes in the basic set or in the uh basic set not in the thing but charm dice of course you can put them on your opponent to reduce their attack and then this is going to have a lot of stats effects with a bunch of your different phoenix born so you have all of your different phoenix born that are going to do cool stuff she does where if you spend uh a heart die and this is a minor action as well um, you may draw a card if you do choose a target player to discard a card from the top of their draw pile. So it allows you to draw cards. And then here, deal damage to a target unit um, equal to the number of cards in your hand. I like this. for It's a standard action, but for basic, this can just straight up like wreck somebody. Because I mean, a lot of the times, if you do this at the start of your turn, you're going to have four cards in your hand when you play it. And if you use her ability, you could have even more than that. So being able to deal that amount of damage for a standard action and a basic die seems pretty solid to me. And then here we have um, Beguile. This places exhaustion tokens on uh, your opponent's unit, which can be huge for making them not attack you back or not attack you when you're not counter striking you, basically. And then Judgment here um, costs a bunch, but it destroys all units. Oh, so this could be huge if you're able to get all of their stuff revealed and then put it out here. But early in the turn, this is not going to be nearly as good. But late in the turn, you might have your own units on the board, so you have to figure out the right time to play that Judgment. And then... Uh, Leo, Sunshadow here, has uh, he has his own Conjuration, so he can place a Golden Finch Conjuration into the battlefield. That's pretty cool. Unit Guard, so he can kind of block for people. Um, once the unit is destroyed, you may choose a target player to discard two cards from the top of their draw pile, which, of course, being able to use this in uh, the Chimera mode, being able to run them through their draw pile can be good to like kind of time them out a bit. Um, attached Phoenix Board cannot... Attached Phoenix Born cannot guard. So this is a reaction spell, making it so that they can't guard. That's not as big a deal, I don't think, in this, but maybe there's some cool stuff. Um, and then you do have your different uh, your deck here. So the deck here, you're basically going to choose one of these four Phoenix Born, and you're going to add them to this deck and be able to play with them. Um, and this is a pre-built deck that you can just straight up play against the uh, Chimera there. So you have a couple of ready spell boards. This is Summon the Bastion Badger. Um, it's not too cheap, but I love how it works. And also when you do this, you get to raise one of your charm die up and this will bring out your Bastion Badger, which he has unit guard, so he can guard other units. Also, when this unit is in battle with a unit with a charm die on it, um, it gets plus two to its attack value. So yeah, with three attack when attacking and three life, that seems pretty awesome to me. And then the other one here is another interesting thing, uh, the Shimmer Wing. This is a draw a card when you do it, so would combo very well with her, being able to do her drawing card stuff. And then place a Shimmer Wing Conjuration into the battlefield, which are these interesting guys. Um, they don't have any attack, um, but um, you can do a basic action, or, or you can do a standard action, and then do use a basic die, and then you can discard two of these to put the Flame Entity, or Eternity Flame, into play. Um, when this unit comes into play, you may destroy a target opponent controls with a charm die on it if you do deal two damage to the opponent's Phoenix Born. So not only are you destroying a unit, you're also doing two extra damage. So awesome. And three attack and three life seems pretty awesome. So you have uh, a couple or three of those shimmer wings you can bring out and then you can bring out the Eternity Flame once you have a couple of them out. Um, and then we'll look at a couple of the rest of the cards here. 
Um, your ready spell that you actually can use here also has to do with your charm dice. Um, this is a minor action, and it costs a um, charm die, the, the, the highest level of that. And then when the spell comes into play, you may choose a charm die in your exhausted pool and resolve its die power without paying its cost. Awesome. So you can basically bring it out and use it just for the cost on this card. Um, and then deal one damage to a unit with a charm die for a standard action exhausting this. And then if it's focused, you may instead deal one damage to target Phoenixborn, whose owner has no cards in their draw pile, which will be a little bit hard to pull off, but it does give you an extra option on that as well. I love this guy, the Chimera Charmer ally. He costs a ton, but um, when this unit comes into play, you may choose a charm die in your exhausted pool and resolve its die power without paying its cost. Another way to get charm dice out there on your opponent. And then this unit's attack value is increased by one for each unit any opponent controls with a charm die on it. So his attack can be way higher than two, which can combo with a bunch of other things. And he has recovery of two and life of four. This guy costs a lot, but oh man, she is amazing. Um, and then we have Rose Gardener here. When this unit comes into play, you may remove one status token from target unit or spell. So that's awesome. Allowing you to kind of like unexhaust things would be really cool. And then uh, for my action, uh, change one charm die in your active pool to the side of your choice. So instead of having to meditate, you can kind of change it with that as well without having to discard cards from your hand or your deck. And then um, also just cost a basic to play out. One attack and one life, one recover. So not too strong, but can make some stuff happen. Then we have Embrace here. After um, any player's Phoenix Born is dealt damage by an attack, spell or ability, or dice power, another player controls. Discard the spell to prevent that damage from being received. So you can put these into play to help your Phoenix Born stay alive with the Embrace there. And then Dealer's Choice. Choose two target opponent or two cards and target opponent controls. Um, at least one of them must be a unit. If you do, the opponent must place one exhaustion tokens on one of the chosen cards. So you can make them exhaust stuff. And then fell well, I like this one as well. Action spell, discard target unit and opponent controls with a value of X. If you do discard X cards from off the top of opponent's draw pile, and then X is how many hearts you spend. So you can just do straight damage to uh, one of their units. And then arrogance here, costs one heart to play. Reaction spell, you play a spell after you declare attackers. Uh, chosen attacking unit for the remainder of the turn. Chosen unit cannot be blocked or guarded against by units with charm dice on them. So once again, allowing you to manipulate stuff with your charm dice. That's basically what you get for your Phoenix Born in the Blight of the Never set, allowing you to do a bunch of different stuff and kind of have that pre-built deck with a little bit of options so you can play the game several times with this. Let's see my thoughts. So I rated Ash's Red Reigns very highly, and when I played it, I said, man, I really wish there were more Chimera to face off against. And this adds a whole nother one to the game, and then adds another one of those pre-built um, decks for you to be able to play with Phoenixborn. This time it is a like solid charm dice deck. Um, but yeah, I, I just really enjoy being able to play the solo. Um, Marvel Champions is my favorite game of all time, and this gives me a vibe of that, but gives me a more like, even more crunchy, thinky game. Um, because the Ashes has your starting five, you have these cards you're starting out the game with, and then you start with a huge dice pool trying to figure out how to min-max that and not knowing exactly all the moves the Chimera is gonna do. When are they gonna reveal cards? When are they going to be attacking? When are they gonna be playing crazy conjurations, making your guys bleed out? Oh no, my guy's bleeding out now, and I should go ahead and attack with him now so that way he doesn't die off first. Lots of interesting choices. And I think that the Blight of the Never Set is another interesting bad guy for this because it has those like seeds that it throws out there that are going to be adding those Red Reigns tokens, making those ultimates go up faster if you don't take care of those. And then making your like slashing your guys and making them bleed is kind of annoying. The whole like plant, plant set of this is very interesting because it feels like you're attacking a plant. They're like, it's not attacking you back that much. And you're just kind of annoyed of like, Man, these things are all out here. They're doing all these different weird status effects, but they're not actually coming into my guys and letting me attack them first. So I had to figure out how to manipulate that and figure out how to make the board state work for me. Um, and the whole time, like it just keeps building up towards that ultimate. And it's like, man, we've gone so many rounds and it hasn't attacked with all of its stuff. And it starts collecting all of the different things to be able to do its red rains tokens. And you know when that ultimate goes off, more of your guys are gonna be bleeding and it's gonna be getting stronger. Um, I love the fact that you can play all of these at different difficulties and play at kind of like the level. If you're super familiar with Ashes, you can make it more difficult against you. Or if you want to play super casually, like honestly, 
when I play this, I don't play at a high level. I want to play it like just for fun and like try to figure out how to math out and puzzle out all the different stuff. And I mean, I normally win against the standard and I'm sure other people would be like, oh, I want to upgrade to a higher difficulty. I, I enjoy just actually beating the game here and there, but I do like that they make it where it's not too hard for you. And I just like the fact that there's a way to play Ashes cooperatively now. I really enjoyed Ashes, but I got rid of my stuff back in the day, and this has really brought me back into it. I'm always excited for the new Red Rain sets that come out and new ways to fight in stuff. I need to figure out a new sword solution because I have a lot more of this stuff, and I want to be able to have all of my bad guys. I can have my pre-built Phoenixborn decks and be able to play Ashes. I don't play at like a competitive level where I'm playing against other players and doing all sorts of different crazy stuff. I just want to be able to play for fun um, whenever I have some downtime. And Ashes Red Reigns has really been a blast for me to do that. And I really enjoy, I enjoy Charm Dice in general. Um, this was my first Phoenix Born when I ever played the game. She always had all the snakes she was building up, but now I'm fighting people with badgers and, and different things like that. And it's just fun to be able to play. Seeing some of the old Phoenix Borns that I used to play the game with coming back around with new abilities is really cool too. So I really enjoy the Charm Dice deck. I think it's fun to figure out how to manipulate those Charm Dice, putting them on your opponents to be able to get extra buffs and benefits for yourself and being able to nerf all of their characters as well. So I think overall, I'm giving this one, I think I'm gonna give it a nine. I really enjoy how everything works together. I love that they're coming out with more of these. One thing I really would love for Ashes Red Reigns is to have a cooperative version that's like a starting point for the game. Because right now, you have to first, you have to get the base set. Then you have to get the Red Reigns expansion to be able to play cooperatively, to be able to have the dice and the tokens and all the things that you need to be able to play this. But I would love to see Plaid Hat make a just straight up intro set like i know they have in summoner wars they have two player sets where you're fighting against each other i'd love to see a either a solo or cooperative where it's specifically like this is an on starting point where it's just completely cooperative i would love to see something like that or even if they repackage some of this stuff as kind of like a this is how you get in if you want to play the game specifically cooperative if you want to play on a casual level or you just want to be playing against these chimeras instead of playing against other players that might have more experience for you because ashes is a very heady game it's a game where you have to think about your moves and make meaningful decisions and if somebody has more experience with it they're probably going to wreck you but playing against the chimera is a lot of fun for me anyway um that has been my look at ashes red rains blight of the never set keep coming out with these and i'll keep playing them i'm stoked to play more of them anyway i've been roy canny i'll see you on the next one